We're doing some classic stuff today. I am going to just go through a daily usage of Vim that I'm, I do basically every day. My thinking in how to optimize something, how to get a lot of text editing done with very, very, very little effort. Um, uh, so here's what I'm doing today. Uh, I have this book that I am reprinting. It's called The Alchemy Reader. It actually has a bunch of stuff in it, but uh, um, the idea is I have you know, a whole bunch of these uh, texts that I'm including in here. And one of them is this. It's a very short poem that you see on the left called The Division of Chaos, right? And I have just copied and pasted this in. This is all it is, right? Um, but here's the problem with that. Now, that is not sufficient to work in uh, LaTeX, of course. So let me actually look for this. Let's see how it looks in here. You'll see that, of course, the poem Every single line should rhyme, or some of them are slant rhymes, or rhymes that don't work in modern English, like God and abode, uh, but deep sleep, good stood, right? It's a poem, okay? But of course, if you just include this text in LaTeX, LaTeX, um, firstly, LaTeX has a special verse environment that you should use, because you can style it and do other things with that. So I wanna have, at the beginning of this, I wanna have begin verse, and at the end of each of these little paragraphs, I wanna have end verse, but additionally, if you look at how it compiles, it compiles as just one big paragraph because obviously LaTeX, um, it only creates new paragraphs when there are two new lines. Um, or if you use, you know, the slash slash thing. So here's what we're gonna wanna do. I, you know, I have a bunch of, this isn't like a super long document, but I don't wanna edit this all manually. Um, but here's what I want the end result to be. So let's say I am actually, let, let me uh, show you what buttons I'm pressing with screen key. Uh, I'm going to just copy uh, four lines here, and I'm going to paste them up here. And here's what I want for the rest of the document. Uh, first things first, I want to have begin verse at the beginning of each of these paragraphs. And at the end, I want to have end verse. And then of the lines in the middle, I want to add a slash slash to the end of each line, right? With the exception of the final line. It does not need one of those. So I want this, I'm gonna take this syntax and I wanna apply it to everything else in this document. And of course, I don't wanna type it out. I just did it for five or four or five um, uh, lines here and it took like way too long, right? You know, I want it to be basically done instantly, okay? So let's do that. Let, let's, um, now it'll take a while for me to explain everything, but in real life, this is something that I would do very quickly and uh, well, I'll just explain it to you and then you'll see how quickly it goes. Or actually, no, I'll do it first, and then I will sh I will explain what I did, because, yeah, we'll, we'll do it that way. So here's what I'm going to do. Actually, I'm not even going to record, well, yeah, I'm not even going to record my keys. I'm, I'll let it be a mystery. Okay, so I'm going to start up here, and here's what I'm going to do. In fact, I'm even mistyping, but it doesn't even matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm, it looks like I'm just adding it manually, right? So now... Uh, that, and then um, that, and then, um, let's see, that. And now I am going to do it for the rest of the document like that, right? Oh, th there's going to be an error at the end, but aside from that, the rest of the document should be perfect, right? So what have I done? You'll see now all of these paragraphs, as some kind of magic, they have exactly what I just did to that first verse. And in fact, even the first verse, I didn't go through and add all these slashes manually. I just sort of did them, I highlighted them and magically added it to the end, right? So how did I do all that, right? And now that, this saves you, imagine doing this in like, I don't know, some normal word editor, it would be a big pain. Uh, but what I did is I used a, a macro in Vim, right? So let's explain how that worked. Uh, let me undo all of this, undo, undo. Yeah, we'll undo the whole thing. Now I'm going to show you what keys I'm pressing. So here's what I do at the very beginning. Now, if we want to, firstly, what is a macro? A macro is just a sequence of characters that you can record. And what you can do in Vim is you can save them to a particular letter and you can actually hide many macros and many different letters. And then you say, okay, I want to use the macro that I recorded at the letter V. And then it just reproduces all of those key presses, however much you want, all right? So let's talk about what I did. Now, firstly, to record a macro, you press Q, and then Q is like the macro key. 
and then you type what uh, you know what letter you want to save it as and I'm gonna save it as V for verse so let's let's now record this macro now I am deliberately starting it at the beginning notice that my cursor is again at the beginning of this verse at the beginning of this line so now all the keys I press are gonna be recorded to V and if I ever want to not have to type them again I just you know call the V macro so let's start first thing I'm gonna type capital O to create a line above me and go into an insert mode. And then I'm going to type begin verse. Um, and notice when I was typing before, I actually made an error and I had to backspace. That actually doesn't make a, a difference. Let's say I backspace and I retype. That's fine. That's not going to cause a pro problem here. Um, now I'm going to press escape. Notice at the bottom it says recording at V and it's still recording. You can go in and out of uh, insert mode. Now what I'm going to do is I want to go down and add inverse to the end of this. Um, but of course I can't, I don't want to just press J, 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 J or something to go down. What I want to press is I want to press right bracket and right bracket goes to the end uh, of this, this paragraph. And the reason I want to do that is because the paragraphs I'm going to be editing in the future, they might not be as many lines as this. So I would be going further than I want. But if the nice thing about right bracket and many other movements in Vim is that they're sensitive to syntax, not how many lines you happen to have. So now I am going to type capital O again to create a new, uh, new line above me and type in end verse. Okay. Now I'm going to press escape to go to uh, normal mode again. I'm going to go up. And remember, I want to have slashes on all the lines that are not the last one. So notice I went up two lines to this. Now I'm going to press capital V to highlight it. And I'm going to do what I did before. And I'm going to use left slash to go up this far. Um, and it goes to the, to the beginning of the paragraph. And then I'm going to press J, J to go down to the first line. And that should be the same. I, I'm pretty sure that should be the same in all these verses here whenever you type you know, left bracket and then JJ, since all of them will have begin verse, you'll be going to the right space. You could make that more complicated if you wanted it more robust, but this is enough. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to run a command. I'm going to run the uh, press colon to run a command, and I'm going to run the normal command, which allows me to run a sequence of normal commands on each of these lines. And the normal commands that I'm going to run are actually just in, actually going to start with capital A to add something to an end of a line. So that will put me in insert mode. And then I'll type uh, space, space, and then slash, slash. And then press enter, and you will see what that did is on each of those lines, it runs the normal command, capital A, space, slash, slash, which is just running, you know, or just inserting uh, a, a space, slash, slash at the end of each of those lines. So now we're almost done. The last thing I want to do is I want to move us downward to the place where our next macro is going to be used, right? So I've created this verse, like this is saved in my macro once I press Q, um, but I'm not going to do that yet. I am now just going to go down to the next place I want to be able to run the macro. So I'm going to press right uh, bracket and I'm going to press J so that I'm now on the beginning verse, and I'm actually going to press ZZ so we can get it in the middle just so when it happens we can see it, right? Um, so now I'm going to end this macro by pressing Q, and so what it'll do is you start on a paragraph, you run this macro, and then you'll end up on the next paragraph that you need to run it on. So what does that mean? Well, to run a macro, and again, we save this in V for verse, um, to run a macro you just type at and then whatever key you saved it in. So I'm just going to type at and then V. And so what happened? Well, this entire verse, let's actually undo that, right? <laughs> U to undo. So we're at this um, verse that starts with so that of high old blah, blah, blah. So I run at V. And you'll now see that this same paragraph is now versified. And it put us at the beginning of the next paragraph, right? So now what we can, we can actually run a bunch of these in sequence. We can uh, just uh, type in... Um, at V, at V, at V, at V, and now we just did four paragraphs. Here's the last one, at V. Uh, this one messed up. This one messed up because of our bracket. Yeah, there's no there's no words at the end, so it, it got confused and went up two lines. That's all it is. But that's an easy fix, right? So all of this stuff, again, um, it's a lot, of, a lot of text editing if you're doing it manually, and it's even a lot of text editing if you're 
just using Vim in the normal way, but once you're using a macro, it becomes something that you can do very easily. And um, that might seem complicated if it's the first time you've done a macro, but when you play around with them and you really get, like, you get a principled idea for how they work and you make it a reflex, um, you will be as fast as I was earlier when I just, you know, in 10, 15 seconds, probably less than that, I wrote a macro and applied it in all the situations that I wanted it to, to be run. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's about it. Um, yeah, that's it. That's how to use Vim. <laughs> Actually, if I were smart, I would show you the end result here of our text in LaTeX. But yeah, so we, we've changed the text with Vim uh, and the code. And now we'll see that instead of being one giant paragraph, right, um, at the end of every line, it uh, indents where it should. And of course, it's in the verse um, environment. So we, if we style that or do other things with that, it will uh, work how it's supposed to. Notice there are a couple things I need to change here with the formatting. I think when it Looks like when it goes to another line, it's like indenting. I can change that, but that that's like a LaTeX issue. That that's just changing a line of code. Um, either way, so that's it. See you guys next time. That's how you do it.